training the mind and the heart of meditation. For countless kalpas, sentient beings have been wandering in the three realms and can't find the true home. Now, let's study how to bring the mind home. The gift of learning to meditate is the greatest gift you can give yourself in this life. Learning to meditate is learning how to purify the mind and tame the negative emotions with concentration, keeping it objective and clear. For it is only through meditation that you can undertake the journey to discover your true nature and so find the stability and confidence you will need to live and die well. Meditation is the road to enlightenment. Fortunately, we live in a time when all over the world many people are becoming familiar with meditation. It is being increasingly accepted as a practice that cuts through and soars above cultural and religious barriers. There are many rituals in religions. Now, when we propagate Dharma, we'll remove many religious rituals. We're learning how to put theory into practice in order to directly experience and realize the truth, rather than wearing monastic robes to show some religious rituals, which is being formalistic. Nowadays, many people have wrong understanding regarding Buddhism. In their opinion, there's a Lord or God in the universe or the world that rules everything. In Buddhism, we can realize the truth through spiritual practice. In the world, there's no God or Lord that rules everything. Just as we often say, there's no saviour. Everyone is his or her own saviour. Buddhas, Buddhasattvas and the teachers in other religions are our mentors, through whose teachings each of us can save ourselves. It enables those who pursue it to establish a direct contact with the truth of their being. It is a practice that at once transcends the dogma of religions and is the essence of religions. As we've been highlighting, when learning Buddhism, we should have a scientific attitude to seek truth and be practical. As monastics that propagate the Dharma, when you get along with lay people, don't forget this attitude. Don't chit-chat or socialize with them. When teaching Dharma, don't talk too much about worldly matters. Generally, we are distracted from our true selves. Sentient beings are grasping at a false self, the five aggregates. Generally, we waste our lives in endless activity. Meditation, on the other hand, is the way to bring us back to ourselves. Meditation is a basic requirement to make the deluded mind disappear and the true nature appear. In other words, through meditation one can transcend the habits of mind and directly realize the truth of life. Our lives are lived in intense and anxious struggle, in a swirl of speed and aggression in competing, grasping, possessing and achieving, forever burdening ourselves with extraneous activities and preoccupations. Meditation is the exact opposite. To meditate is to make a complete break with how we normally operate. For it is a state free of all cares and concerns in which there is no competition, no desire to possess or grasp at anything, 
no intense and anxious struggle, and no hunger to achieve. An ambitionless state where there is neither acceptance nor rejection, neither hope nor fear. A state in which we slowly begin to release all those afflictions and attachments, emotions and concepts that have imprisoned us into the space of natural simplicity. In reality, the emotions of sentient beings are formations of the various habitual seeds accumulated. Our emotions are impermanent and devoid of intrinsic nature. The Buddhist meditation masters know how flexible and workable the mind is. If we train it, anything is possible. In fact, we are already perfectly trained by and for samsara, trained to get jealous, trained to grasp, trained to be anxious and sad and desperate and greedy, trained to react angrily to whatever provokes us. We are trained, in fact, to such an extent that these negative emotions rise spontaneously without our even trying to generate them. Sentient beings have been trained for such a long time that the delusions and emotions rise spontaneously without our even trying to generate them. So, Everything is a question of training and the power of habit. Devote the mind to karmic habits and we know only too well that it will be lazy. Like dreaming, sentient beings are completely trapped in emotions and delusions. All emotions are actually negative energies. Positive energy is free from emotion. It's pure, compassionate, joyful and wise, different from the emotions such as desire. Desire is affliction and emotion. Sentient beings often misunderstand secular love as beautiful, which is actually the beginning of depravity. With desire, one will have hatred and emotion. After being caught up in desire, hatred and attachment for a long time, the mind will gradually become dumb and ignorant. When you're grasping at something, you're scared of losing it, and you tend to generate other negative emotions such as doubt and jealousy. All the other negative emotions are results of desire. Desire is the root of the three kinds of sufferings, the suffering of suffering, the suffering of change, and all pervasive suffering, which you should have learnt. There are many knots in the mind, all created by itself. However, the mind is unaware and doesn't know how to untie them. Rather, it continues to tie new knots upon existing ones. Devote the mind in meditation to the task of freeing itself from the innumerable knots and all kinds of karmic habits such as greed and hatred. We will find that, with time, patience, discipline and the right training, our mind will begin to unknot itself and know its essential bliss and clarity. Training the mind does not in any way mean forcibly subjugating the mind. From spiritual teachings and through personal experience in meditation practice, the awareness sees directly and concretely how the mind functions. Then you can tame the mind and work with it skillfully to gradually eliminate delusion. So it's not subjugating them. After mastering this method, 
the awareness needs to practice constantly. Only through constant practice can one eventually uproot all the delusions and attachments. This is similar to some worldly things. For example, when we practice Tai Chi, after you've learned a routine, you need to practice it every day. After solo practice, you also need to practice with fellow practitioners. Only in this way can we truly have skills and rich and flexible experience to deal with opponents. Practicing routines can enhance our inner strength, whereas practicing with others can accumulate experience in defeating opponents and mastering the true essence of Tai Chi flexibly. It's the same with playing Go. After learning how to play Go, you need to practice every day on how to place stones, occupy territory and capture the opponent's stones. Afterwards, you also need to practice with a partner and grow through partner practice. Just as a writer only learns a spontaneous freedom of expression after years of often gruelling study ever since childhood. And just as the simple grace of a dancer is achieved only with enormous, patient effort for over ten years since childhood. It's all the same. Learning meditation is similar. When the mind begins to wake up, it masters the right method. The mind also needs long-term practice. After practicing for a period, it will reach perfection. Whatever you do, as long as your mind is fully devoted, you'll reach perfection. This is true for both worldly things and meditation. It's so meaningful to do this, more meaningful than anything else. It's the most meaningful thing in life. Through learning meditation and mastering meditation methods, the mind can understand and realize the truth of the universe, become clear and free with amazing power. This is the most meaningful thing in life. Doing other things is also to train us. Our mind needs enlightenment after which even doing worldly things becomes meaningful. At that time, doing worldly things is to train our mind, to realize through practice, and to benefit sentient beings. While benefiting sentient beings, the mind is perfected. Without enlightenment, if you seek Dharma from external illusions, your life would be meaningless with innumerable sufferings. Meditation can make the mind more and more pliable so that you can become master of your own mind and employ it to its fullest and most beneficial end. If the mind is trained to be extremely pure and pliable without any emotion, it will soon find the truth and get enlightened. The 8th century Buddhist master Shantideva said, If this elephant of mind is bound on all sides by the cord of mindfulness, all fear disappears and complete happiness comes. In reality, there is no enemy outside of our mind. All enemies are in our mind. Our emotions are just like tigers, lions, elephants, bears, serpents, and those fear, pride, etc. are all our enemies. All of these are bound by the mastery of your mind, and by the taming of that one mind, these beast-like negative emotions and the demon of pride are subdued, even completely destroyed in the end. 
So when you begin to understand where meditation will lead you, you will approach it as the greatest endeavour of your life, one that demands of you the deepest perseverance, enthusiasm, intelligence and discipline. To realise the truth, the mind needs to first learn meditation, which is the best way to realise the truth. When you abide in deep concentration, free from any affliction in the desire realm, and even transcend the form realm and the formless realm, the wisdom of emptiness will appear soon. When the mind is completely tranquil, it's qualified to turn wisdom on. At this time, whatever I say to inspire you, like a key, will probably turn your wisdom on and eradicate the ignorance. In this lecture, I'm mainly encouraging you to meditate, to give yourselves time and to know what's the most meaningful thing in your life. It's actually simple. Just try it and you'll know. Throughout your life, you're seeking outside of your mind, but can't find anything. Just like dreaming, you're toiling in vain. After waking up from a dream, you'll know that, weren't you toiling for nothing? Whether happiness or fear, whatever in the dream turns out to be false after you wake up. You are toiling in vain. Enlightenment is just like waking up. After your mind wakes up and is aware of the truth, you will find that your previous life was all in vain. Start over and cherish every moment, because life is fleeting, and the method to find the true nature back is rare to encounter. It's rare to have this opportunity in your life. Empress Wu Zetian said, rare to encounter throughout millions of culpas, which is not exaggerated. Look at those animals, for example, an ant. When will it encounter the Dharma, the method to find its true nature back? You'll never know how many roots of virtue it needs to accumulate and how many thousands of culpas it needs to wait to become a human. After becoming a human, it might fall again and you'll never know when will it encounter the Dharma. Many people are seeking truth, but few people find it. Nowadays, there are various extra mental schools outside and even inside Buddhism, which are being formalistic. As you know, Many Buddhists are seeking Dharma outside of their mind, such as burning incense, making prostrations, chanting, and life release. What can they get? They are still dreaming, but haven't waken up. Buddha taught us to get enlightened. Buddha exactly means enlightenment, namely waking up your mind. Sing means introspecting, realising and waking up. We need to wake up. As we know, we are much more reasonable and wise than those who are dreaming. After meditation and study, when you realise once, you'll find that you are almost like dreaming before. All of a sudden, you've made a breakthrough. Just like waking up from a dream, you're glad. I think everyone will be glad to wake up. When your wisdom is turned on, you'll find how ignorant and deluded you used to be and how meaningful this is. We should learn Dharma in this way. We should establish a brand new concept to learn Dharma, which is pretty important. For those without faith or the beginners, after hearing this, I hope a door is open for you, 
and you're willing to find your true nature back. Alright, that's all for today.